So welcome to chapter two, the OSI reference model. Again, this is for my Network Plus in 10.006 course. So foundation topics is we're going to be talking about OSI model. We're going to be looking at the TCP IP stack. And we're going to be talking what port numbers and the corresponding applications are. So let's dissect uh, the OSI model first. What's the purpose of a network model? What are the layers? What are the characteristics? How does the TCP IP stack compare to the OSI model? And what are well-known TC and UDP ports? And what are the given collection of common applications used for those ports? So the first, the purpose of a network model is so that we have a structure. So the seven layers are layer seven application, Presentation, layer 5 is session, 4 is transport, layer 3 is network, layer 2 is data link, layer 1 is physical. Ways to remember this could be if we're going from the top to bottom, all people seem to need data processing. If we're going from the bottom up, please do not throw sausage pizza away. Normally, people learn it top bottom. All people seem to need data processing. It's a very common way to look at this. So, next, if we're looking at the layers, how do the different layers correspond to different envelopes or different packages? And so, what we have is initially, is these three are data. So these are all a data envelope. Then the data envelope gets stuffed into a segment envelope. Segment is just a way to group data so that if we're looking at one box or one envelope, we can just stuff so much data into that one envelope before it's too full. So we can actually group them separately. That's what we do at segment. That's not all we do, but at least Initially, we're, we're going to stick with that. That segment will then be put into a packet. That packet is put into a frame, and that frame is then transferred into bits. And then when it gets to where it's going, it gets unpackaged. Bits, frames, packets, segments, back to data. So layer one, physical. The characteristics here are the bits that represent the media. Could be electronic. Or electrical could be light could be a, a radio wave we're looking at different types of characteristics like uh, maybe the topology maybe the multiplexing time division multiplexing versus frequency division multiplexing that's just again how to put that signal on the wire whether that wire being again copper or fiber or wireless at layer two of the data link layer. Again, here it's a frame. The data link layer is broken down into two sublayers, the MAC and LLC, or logical link control. So the MAC deals with media access control. That deals with things like the physical addressing, the topology, transmission method, while the LLC deals with the co connection services like flow control or error control maybe synchronization. Layer three deals with the network. That's gonna be our addressing, our packets, routing, routing protocols, flow control and packet sequencing. Our IP addressing are also known as logical addressing, things like bandwidth usage or connection services, things of that nature. Layer four, transport. Transport deals with transmission protocols, connection versus connection, list oriented, TCP versus UDP, flow control, windowing versus buffering. So I said connection versus connection list. So connection oriented is a guaranteed statement. If I send this packet, you will get it. That's TCP. Connection list is UDP. So how do the differences work? Is 
that's part of that flow control. With TCP guaranteed delivery, if a packet is sent and then dropped because of an error, the sender resends it until the actual receiver gets it. In UDP, that's not the case. You try, and it's best effort. If you get it, great. If you don't, oh well. So there's this thing called a window. This is also some kind of form of an uh, acknowledgement system or handshake. So we actually send a packet, and then we wait until the receiver receives it, and then acknowledges that they got it. So what makes this a sliding window is that we can make the window size vary. Are we going to send two packets, three packets, four packets? Or it can vary. So we may say, hey, after the first packet, say that you got it. Then, if you did get it, we'll send two more packets, then you acknowledge it. Maybe after four packets, then you acknowledge it. So forth and so forth. But that acknowledgement will actually be the acknowledgement for that window size. So if we have a window size of four segments, for example, if this one gets it, this one gets it, that one gets dropped. But they got those segments, four, five, and seven. What ends up happening is, because that acknowledgement is for all four of them, they all get dropped and all get resent. So that's an issue with the window size sliding issue. Layer 5 is session, and this is setting up a session, identifying the flow, maintaining and turning down or terminating a session, as well as transfer of data between that session. That could be like if you create an HTTPS session, and it's going to be a secured session, the session controls that session feature. Layer 6 is presentation, that's going to be data formatting, or how data is represented on your screen, such as formatting as ASCII or JPEG or the different images formats or just formatting, as well as encryption. Last, we have the application services for the application layer. That's actually going to be application, like HTTP or HTTPS. That's going to be the specific application service for that specific application. Moving on is our TCP IP stack. Notice here it is just four application, transport, internet, network interface. So, how do they compare? Again, pretty similar to OSI. The top three layers are the application, they deal with data, transport deals with transport, network deals with internet. And here, the TCP IP stack, the network interface, deals with our data link and physical networks all together. Okay, so I keep referring to this as an envelope. So just like any envelope made in the US, uh, it has a format. Just like our IP has a format. And so this is what a IPv4 packet looks like. So we have all the different groups. So first off we start off with the version and length and type of service. Then we have a field for total length and identification, IP flags, offsets, TTL protocol checksum, IP source, IP destination, and IP option. Then we actually have some form of data. And obviously this is going to be put on an envelope for it to be sent. Here's our TCP segment header. And again, pretty similar. Source, destination, sequence numbers, acknowledgments, offset reserved, the window size, checksum, all of that good information. UDP, again, has its header, source and destination, length and checksum. Notice, no sequence, no acknowledgement, because again, this is connectionless oriented. So what are these ports? A port is a hole or a predefined setting of sorts. For example, if we want to use HTTP, we could say HTTP, but what hole or what port does that use? And how do we set that quite up? 
So we actually move web traffic on port 80. And essentially that's just a hole. That way if we want to block all web traffic, we can just block port 80. And that stops the flow of web traffic over that port. And so here we have an example of a source and port number and a destination and a port number as well as the return trip. So this information is being sent to our web server. Here's my IP address. Here's the port number I'm communicating on. Here's the address that I'm sending it to. And this is the port that I'm sending it to. The web server will pick, uh, listen on port 80 and then respond with the appropriate information. The source information is now this guy. Because again, it's flowing that way. It's returning to on port 80 and it's going to that destination address. So some common protocols and ports are for our application could be Telnet, could be SMTP, FTP, or DNS, and these are the appropriate port numbers. Telnet uses port 23, SMTP uses port 25, FTP uses 20 and 21, DNS uses 53. Again, these are TCP ports. While TFTP and DNS use UDP, TFTP uses 69 and DNS uses 53. Again, you're going to notice here DNS uses both TCP and UDP. Both ports are for 53. So port numbers and assignments. There are a lot of port numbers that are pre-assigned. And who are they assigned by? So first of all, there is the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, assigns ports between 0 and 49,151. But how do we how do we refer to these ports? So the first 1,024 well-known ports, and those are normally predefined good uh, ports. Then between 1024 and 49,151, they're called register ports. And then anything above that are called environmental ports. <laughs> Ephemeral mirror ports. I can never pronounce that right. But what are they? So a quick Google search should bring you to some type of common port. 23 uses for Telnet, 25 for SMTP, uh, SMTP. We already know that. Port 80 for web traffic, 88 for Kerberos, 123 for NTP. So what are these ports that we're going to have to know? Common ones are... 3389, Terminal Services, or RDP. Port 110 is going to be for POP. Uh, 1512 for WINS. That's not really that important. But I mean, you want to look through this so that you have a general idea of what ports you're going to be looking for. Because you're looking for POP, you're looking for IMAP, you're looking for things like that. That are going to be very common. For example, IMAP is port 143. Again, not everything has to use these ports, these are just common port numbering. And that's actually it for this chapter. Again, this is a nice brief overview getting into our topics. Thank you.